Hey everybody, this video has been requested pretty much the most in the last year and a half or two of just about any topic somebody wanted to see and it's the brakes on my MSL2. Now this airplane has 188 inch wing so it's a big airplane and um, so it's easy to build brakes on it because it's just got, you know, everything's big on it. If you were building a 40 size or a 60 size plane it might be harder to put brakes like this on it. But what I want to start out with is, you know, basically talking about, you know, why did I do it? And I just did it for fun. Now, I love to put ball bearings in the wheels of my airplanes if they're big. And if you're flying off pavement, sometimes a plane can literally roll forever. So the brakes were really kind of a necessity when I was flying off pavement if I just didn't want to roll forever down the runway. Okay. So they, they are, I do use them all the time. And they have been a little bit problematic, and I'm going to show that I just broke them down last night. And um, uh, the cam part that I thought was broken isn't bad. They were just out of, adjust, out of adjustment, and I'll show you how I can adjust them. But let's get started on this. So uh, what we're going to talk about here is the um, uh, brake system, brake cam, brake lining, which is the... Uh, um, the aluminum inside the shoe and then the brake shoe and then how I adjust the servos. Okay. So basically the way I designed this was in 3ds max so I could 3d print, uh, the, uh, parts and, uh, I mean any part that could be 3d printed. Okay. That's the best way to describe it. So as we explode this and we start talking about all the stuff that's in here, I have a high torque servo. I have a brake cam. And I'll show you later on how that cam actually actu actuates the brake shoes. Uh, then I have the brake mount, which holds everything together. Then I have the shoe base, which actually has a small 440 shaft coming out of it that, that keeps the shoes in place so they don't move around um, inside there. And then, you know, I've got the lining. Uh, I've got the brake shoes, the brake retainer, which is a rubber band that holds the brakes closed. And I got my axle and all of that interesting stuff. When you think about the materials, I have 6061 um, T6 tube for the lining. And then these are all the parts that I 3D print. And I have two 3D printers. And if you've ever followed me, I, I, pretty three, I 3D print a lot of stuff. And um, yeah. So let's look inside kind of what's going on here. So if you look at the upper left hand uh, picture, you see the brake shoes and you see that little cam in there. I'm gonna show you a little bit more of a close up that in a minute. On the upper right hand, you can see the servo. I mean, it's a high torque, uh, high tech servo <clears throat> that is stuck in that uh, mount. And bottom left hand corner, you can see the uh, T6 lining in there. And then on the bottom right hand corner, you can actually see where I laid the shoes in there. So real quick, I want to talk about RTL fasteners, and actually I wanted to share, uh, it's hard probably to see, but this is one of the little kits that I put together with all their parts that they send you. And um, of course, if you buy more than $50 worth of product and you use the code DA30, you're going to get 30%. So buy $50 or more, get 30% off by using code DA30. So now back to the show. So when you think of the cam, this is the cam right here. And if you look at the servo and cam that I circled there, the servo, um, as it turns and moves those apart, can draw a lot of torque. So I actually have a separate battery in the airplane that runs these servos. And you may not know this, but you can take the positive negative wire off a servo and connect it to another battery as long as the signal um, uh, wire is still going back to your receiver and it will still work and uh, that way if these high torque servos jammed or saw a constant load they wouldn't drain the batteries too quick also another thing I do do just kind of gonna derail this for a minute all of my giant scale airplanes have telemetry I can hear the voltage in my ear of my flight pack but I can also hear alarms if my receiver packs are getting too low okay uh, just being a little bit of a nerd there but as we talk about this uh, little cam here, originally I just 3D printed it out of ABS. I tried PETG and I tried ASA and they weren't strong enough. So I put the 440 uh, through the middle of it and then ground off the head 
in an attempt to give it more strength, and it actually worked. Now, when my left brake wasn't working, I thought that it broke. But when I broke it down last night, it hadn't broke. It was just out of a little bit of adjustment. And I'll, and I'll show you how, how that works in a minute. So here is a more close-up. The brake's engaged, and you can actually see the little rubber band holding the two shoes together against the cam. And um, basically, the way this went out of adjustment was the ABS wears slowly, and I wanted it like that, okay? So I always turn to the right and would engage the right brake, lock up the, the right brake so I could pivot the airplane. And for anybody watching, they're kind of like, holy cow, that plane's got brakes. That's really cool. I love doing that. What I had done is the ABS had worn just enough that... Um, it wasn't engaging as much as the left brake. Now, when I was landing, I wasn't really noticing it pulling, and it's probably just because I don't use a lot of brakes landing. It's always when I'm coming to a stop. Um, the way I... Uh, well, hang on a minute. So here's, here's the cam. So, uh, and I'll show you in a minute how I adjust it. And then when we look at the lining here, this aluminum will never wear. And the ABS against that just gets warm. It doesn't get enough to melt the ABS. So the ABS does wear a little bit. I notice I end up with little bitty marbles in there sometimes of an ABS, and I think that's where it gets warm, <clears throat> it cools, and then the next time it engages, it peels off. I've had a lot of people say, why don't I put like a leather lining on there on the brake pad itself, I mean the brake shoe itself, and it's a good idea. I just haven't gotten to it. <clears throat> I'm also afraid that if it started to roll off, if that leather were to roll off the shoe it might jam that wheel and the worst thing i want to do is have one brake completely lock up i have enough elevator authority i think if i landed with a locked up tire i wouldn't flip the plane over um just because of the way they land just play, because of the way i designed the airplane with the landing gear placement it would even if i locked up both wheels i think they're going to skid on grass on pavement it might but on grass they're just going to skid and it's kind of funny to hear this airplane when the wheels skid because you it sounds like a real airplane skidding. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So, and here's the shoe, and you can see there's a little bit of wear. Now, I'm always curious why this turns black. There's nothing black inside there. It's got to be the, if you've ever polished aluminum, you get the oxidization come off and it's black. So, this might be it polishing the aluminum and turning this black. Um, here's the shoes again with the um, linings. So what I want to talk about now is what's going on inside here and how I could adjust this. So when you look at the brake and I engage it, you see how those two uh, parts move apart, the two shoes move apart. And if we go back, go forward, you see how it's basically working. And, and it works perfect. You can see the little green rubber band in there too that's holding the shoes together. And I was really nervous how I was gonna do that. And I thought, if I put the groove through the shoe, I'm removing surface of the shoe, but then I thought, it's a model airplane. You know, um, when you go back and look, hang on a minute, I'm gonna go back and show you the shoe for a second. So when you look at the shoe, you see the groove in the middle, well that's for the rubber band. But there's still enough surface on the two sides of those for a model aircraft of my size. Uh, 58 pounds at the time, it's 61 now. Uh, and yes, when I'm getting my over 55 reinstated, it says 61 on the documents. So um, that's what that little rubber band in there is doing, is holding that together. It actuates. But if you look at this gap I'm showing here right now, I can take clear acrylic plastic, sand it on one side uh, so it's rough, and epoxy it in there to get these adjusted exactly where I want. So what I'm gonna do is probably once a month pop these off and check for adjustment. And if they need to be adjustment, I'm just gonna put those little shims in there and that's how I'll adjust these. And I think that's a pretty simple, slick little way to do it without having to have I thought about printing four or five different sets of 3D printed shoes that would have different lengths of the shoe there, but I think it'll be easier just to shim these and epoxy it in. And this is what the servo looks like up close on the inside of the wheel. Now, one thing I can do is I can go in and adjust the servo positioning and travel to get these both tweaked in so that when I 
hit the brakes, they engage really smooth. So, and, and a couple of things. Um, I mix in my radio, okay? So on my finger over here on my radio is the brakes. But when I move my rudder, they are also proportionally engaging the brakes. So if I come to a stop, I hit my brakes, come to a stop, and then let off the brakes, and then go full right rudder, it's going to lock up the right wheel. And then when I add power, then I can pivot right on that point. And you might have seen some of my videos where the drones were following me, and you can see when I land, I do that pivot, and it's really, really cool. So that's it, everybody. I just wanted to cover how I did the brakes on it. This is kind of a part one because as I'm upgrading them now, I'm going to do some video of them being uh, actuated and me adjusting them and all of that. So technically, this is a part one of me upgrading uh, and going through the brakes for y'all. Okay? So have a great day, everybody. Rock on and be safe. See you next time.